Welcome back, everybody. We've gone back out to the field again to test some body armor. Again, it's going to be Battle Steel. I did request that this be sent out for the review from Botac. Uh, I did their level three soft armor, uh, depending on when this video goes live, a couple weeks ago. And you guys asked me to test this one. So uh, again, I reached out to them and had them send it out. It is level four rated. However, it is tested by Botac to level four. It is not NIJ certified to level four. As I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, to get something actually NIJ tested, depending on the amount you send in and stuff like that, it's gonna run about 20 to $30,000 per plate to get it actually listed on there. But they say this will meet those standards. So we're gonna check that out here real quick like. Um, but this one here, unlike a lot of level four plates, is actually a little bit thinner. It's point eight inches. Not sure how that comes across there on camera. It also has a nice natural curve to it. So that way when you're wearing it on your chest, it conforms to your body and is going to be relatively comfortable for hard body armor. Additionally, it's also 5.5 uh, pounds. So on my scale, it was 5.9 ounces, this entire plate. And again, compared to other standalone level four armor that is not steel, that's pretty lightweight. So how'd they do it? Uh, typically with hard armor, not steel, it's all ceramic. And uh, this one here actually has a little bit of polyethylene worked in there as well. And some of you guys who have watched my armor videos in the past know that polyethylene is kind of like a wonder substance in terms of uh, stopping armor or stopping bullets with the exception of armor piercing stuff. Now level four says that it has to stop armor piercing ammo. Again, I only have one of these unfortunately to test out. So I had to kind of figure out what do I want to do there in terms of the test? Do I want to uh, shoot it with some lighter stuff, work up to a 30 caliber armor piercing projectile, or do I want to just start out with that and then kind of work in the other stuff? Again, I only have one, so I had to make a call. We're going with the heavy stuff right off the bat. We're going with the heavy hitter for sure. This right here is some black tip. As you guys can see there, if the camera will actually show it, it's black tip 30 out six. We're gonna send it through this 1904 A1, or rather 1903 A4 rifle here. And uh, we're gonna do everything here from about 15 feet away. We'll get it all rigged up and uh, come back in and get into the shooting piece. But the big reason I wanna mention before uh, getting into that, that people requested this, is the price point and the weight. So the weight, again, typical armor plates are gonna be about eight pounds. This one shaves some weight off that. And the price, price point right now, as of the filming of this video, it could change if you guys are watching this years from now, is $99 shipped. So that's an attractive price point. Uh, so we'll see how it actually does. Once again, guys, we have the black tip ammo going in there. We're gonna send it from about 15 feet. Rock and roll. Go check it out. We certainly center punched it there with that 30 out six. And as you guys can see there, we had some back face deformation, but that's actually really good. Um, if you guys go look at some of my previous uh, level four armor tests, you're gonna see that this is on the lower end with that particular round. I tend to shoot that exact same round in all the level four, cause that's kind of the max of what it's rated for. Um, but it did pretty darn well in my opinion. Uh, but I'm sure there's other rounds you guys want to see tested out. So we will do that. Next up is some 7.62 by 5.1 NATO ball ammunition coming out of the Smith & Wesson M&P 10. And uh, we'll see how it does. Let's check it out. Y'all likely saw it from the slow-mo, but we did not have any penetration. We had some increased back face deformation that you guys can probably see right there. That's very likely due to the impact being about two and a half, three inches above where our 30-06 AP penetrated, and it's just pushing the back face of that plate a little bit further back. Either way, you'd be just fine with that M80 ball. Again, we're at 15 feet, so this is like bad breath distance, and uh, we'll go reset it up and hit it with something else. 
Next, we're gonna shoot some steel K7.6 2x39 Red Army Standard stuff out there. This is the Bimple produced ammo. Firing it here out of our SLR 107 CR, so SBR. Approximately 12 and a half inch barrel, same distance, and uh, we'll see how it likes the steel jacket. Sometimes steel jackets and armor don't play so well, but we shall see. Sega. Again, y'all likely saw that we did not have a pass through, just more back face deformation, trying to spread the shots out a little bit here, give the blade a good shot at passing. And then at the end, if we don't get a penetration, we'll try to get a penetration uh, deliberately. But all in all, it's doing really well. You can see we had a little bit of tearing there. I'm not sure if that comes across there on camera, but you can see the uh, polyethylene there on the back kind of coming out. So you guys can see also, these are chunks of ceramic right here. That's what that stuff is. So the ceramic, for those who don't know how uh, this type of body armor works, basically the ceramic goes in, fragments that takes up some of the energy and also generally speaking, causes the round to tumble a little bit. And then that disperses uh, the force as it goes through the different layers there. And uh, it's doing pretty darn well so far. We'll amp it up though with some high velocity stuff next. For most types of armor, there's two big ways to defeat it. Uh, number one is going to be velocity. Number two is going to be projectile material. So in this case, we have a 20 inch M16A4 clone from Aero Precision. It's a Brownells exclusive. And then we have some M193 5.56 mil spec ammo coming out of a 20 inch barrel. It's going to be smoking guys. Again, we're at 15 feet. So uh, I'm not sure what it'll do to tell you the truth. I think it'll be good, but velocity sometimes is weird. So we shall see. Let's check it out. Once again, the armor did its job and stopped it. You guys can see the entrance hole there, right between the A and the C. A little bit of back face deformation coming across there. You guys can probably see that. Again, none of those rounds would probably feel good if you were wearing it in a carrier, but it would feel a whole lot better than a gigantic hole in your chest. So that's, that's everything I brought out today in terms of rifle rounds and calibers. Not sure what I'm gonna do, but I always like to have failures of plates here on the channel. So, We'll think something up here real quick. Before we go through this course of fire, I want to point out the plate has absolutely passed. I just always like to have failures, like I mentioned, just to kind of see a breaking point. And since we have shotguns out here today, we're going to see how it does against some nine pellet double lot block. This Fioki, it's rated for 1300 feet per second. So it's pretty hot stuff. And uh, keep in mind, every time I fire a shot, you got nine 30 caliber pellets going down range, impacting this uh, plate. So it's not the velocity that's going to get it in this case. If it does, it's going to be just the sheer amount of beatings it takes. I'm going to try to hold center. Shotguns, you never really know. I've actually never patterned this uh, load. So we'll see though. And I taped it down. Hopefully the plate stays uh, attached to that BCM box there. And for those uh, that are wondering, that box is filled with about 70 pounds of sand. So it's got some give kind of like a chest wood. Uh, it's not perfect, obviously, but uh, redneck science, you get what you pay for, I suppose. So we'll see how it does, guys. All right, post down below if you think it will survive. We got six rounds in here. Uh, I'm gonna say no, but we'll see. My shoulder barely survived. Let's check it out.
Well, we've got good and bad news. The good news for the plate was that that load patterns terribly in that gun. That is a gigantic uh, pattern at 15 feet. But the good news is, seriously, no joke, not a single round made it through. Color me impressed. Again, you guys can see the polyethylene there as it's starting to separate. That's kind of uh, where it starts. And then the back piece here is our polyethylene, that kind of half inch piece right there. If you guys can see it, let me peel that off. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me get up close so you guys can get an idea of how this plate's made. That's all polyethylene here. And then we have our ceramic layer up front. <sighs> the testing must continue until the plate dies. Next up, guys, we got our 16-inch Daniel Defense V7 rifle, 5.56, again, M193. We've got about 25 rounds here, and uh, we'll see how she does. Accu point scope on there, one to four. We'll hammer it. That box just looks pathetic. <laughs> At this point, I kind of feel like Ivan Drago. If it dies, it dies. If it dies, it dies. And it died. So you guys can see there we had at least one, two, three, four. I tried to sort of concentrate everything. Looks like we had five actually penetrate. And then the pretty impressive part is these two actually stretched the polyethylene out completely, but did not actually penetrate. So out of 25 rounds, we had five penetrate. Again, guys, it is not rated for that. That is not the level four standard. It met the standard and did very, very well, but we have to kill them. It's just the nature of the beast and there's bullet fragments and everything leaking out onto my hand. That's probably not healthy. Anyway, that's it guys, that's the plate. Level four plate, 5.5 pounds, 0.8 inches thick, so a little bit thinner than most of the level four plates out there. Standalone, takes 30-06 AP like a champ, and it's 99 bucks shipped. Uh, color me impressed, seems like a good value for the money, in my opinion. Uh, I believe they rate the shelf life on this for five years, but that's because of the polyethylene that's in there. And as I've stated in other videos, that's very likely um, being very, very safe uh, by the NIJ, simply because there's a high likelihood that polyethylene will be good well, well, well beyond uh, five years, but that's what it is rated for. Either way, guys, you're talking about 200 bucks for two plates that weigh, uh, what, 11 pounds? Uh, I like it, I'm impressed. I will, of course, drop links down below where you guys can pick these up. If you guys have any questions about the testing we did here today, as always, post down below in the comments section. Hopefully, I'm not a total sweaty mess here, but we had a good time testing this armor. I like armor tests, they're fun. It kinda makes me feel like uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch, just not as successful and not as many viewers. Either way, guys, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you have a question that you need answered, shoot me a message over on Facebook. I respond to all of them that I get over there. I don't always see the comments here on uh, YouTube, Full30, and elsewhere that I post. And that's pretty much it. If you're new to the channel, you know, if you're just out here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.